I'd looked forward to being a parent for as long as I could remember. My husband had to convince me to wait a little while after we were married before becoming parents. His exact words were, we're renting a basement suite, Marina. When I found out I was pregnant, I started reading everything. Blogs, books, the resources from the hospital. I knew how important the early years are in a child's life, and I didn't want to miss any opportunities to support their development. One evening, I called HealthLink because I thought my daughter Aspen had a fever. The nurse asked me to describe my daughter's breathing. And after a few more questions, she told me to go to the hospital within the next four hours. It wasn't until eight months later, with round-the-clock oxygen supplementation and many tests and appointments, that Aspen's diagnosis of neuroendocrine hyperplasia of infancy was finally confirmed. The diagnosis process was traumatizing for both Aspen and myself. And as a new mom, keeping track of all the information was overwhelming. I wanted to do what was best for her, but in this medical world, no amount of reading could help me feel like I was providing her with the best possible support. I found out that Aspen would require more needles every month of the flu season to help prevent respiratory infections. I knew there was nothing I could do to take away the pain, and I was anxious as I walked into the clinic for the first time. A child life specialist named Alyssa met us in the lobby, Immediately, she gave Aspen a toy, and as we watched her play, she started strategizing with me about the procedure. In those few short minutes, I realized there were many things I could do to help my daughter with the pain. She didn't have to survive these medical appointments. She could gain some coping skills in the process. Alyssa helped me put the numbing cream on Aspen's legs. We also placed some buzzy bees around the injection site. As the needle went in, she pulled off and cried, but within moments was nursing again. From there, we made our way to a quiet room that Elisa had arranged for us. And when Aspen was calm and comfortable, we headed home. As Aspen got older, Elisa taught me to incorporate fun activities at the hospital after each appointment. We would look at the fish tank or swim on the playground. When more medical procedures like echoes and blood work were scheduled, We helped her prepare by practicing on a doll and playing with the medical equipment. Aspen was still afraid. She still felt the pain, but things were manageable. It felt good to know that I was doing the best I could for her. At one of the clinic appointments in her second year, I was talking with one of the nurses about how much progress Aspen had made, and I was shocked when she told me that we were the only family in this clinic who incorporated all of these strategies and utilized a child life specialist. It's hard to imagine going through these past three years without that knowledge and support. I think a lot of parents would love to know that in the midst of medical procedures, their children can build resiliency for the rest of their lives.